Hi everyone, Easy here. Today I present you my new idea, it's the most reliable motorcycle safety tip in the world, where I guarantee you, you won't ever be in any type of safety situation riding a bike. I'll speed up the video here. still watching then you aren't ready to do that good I'll show you something else I've come up with but first since I'm talking about motorcycle safety I just want to take the opportunity to ask you to please be safe leave the crazy motorcycle stunts for the pros and for movies and video games there are people out there who care about you so this is a dash cam mirror or mirror dash cam since it's two things in one and each one of them of equal importance. Not gonna get into the specifics about the brand, just get a similar one with good reviews and this video will apply to it. I mean, I'm not hiding my brand for any reason. If you do want to know, it's a Venta. I'll leave their website in the description. This is not a paid promotional video or anything. Again, this video will apply to any brand that you get as long as you get a decent unit with similar specs. I'm making this video longer than I initially intended, but there is a reason for it. I want to make sure that you find out whether this is for you or not before you invest your hard earned money on it. Let me start by addressing the elephant in the room. This thing is not designed for motorcycles, but to me, and I'll say that again, to me, it works perfectly. And so it should be the case for hundreds of thousands of people out there. But let me get something straight. For some of you, this won't work. Why do I say this? First of all, this unit is not waterproof. I know that's a big ouch for many out there. I don't ride while raining, and a few times it has started raining while I was riding, I have removed the unit takes five seconds with the way I have it mounted. Second of all, this is not a new concept. There are dedicated bike digital mirrors available, but most are not also both front and rear recording cameras at the same time, and they can be over five times more expensive than this option. I paid 120 US dollars for my unit. The one in my car is more expensive, but it's also 4K. Well, with the options of front 4K plus rear 1080p or front 2K plus rear 2K. This unit is 2K with the options of front 2K plus rear 1080p or front 1080p plus rear 2K. And third, I showed the project concept to a Facebook group I'm part of. And while most people liked it, there were many negative comments saying that it was a terrible idea and that you'd end up having an accident because of it, because of how distracting it was. I remember the one comment that did sum up to me all the negative comments, which said, distracting AF, just like that, distracting AF. You know what that means. Let me address that. No, it's not any more distracting than a GPS, for instance, or your mounted phone, or the actual dashboard, or even the side rear view mirrors. 
You only look at it when you need to. It doesn't mean that because I now have a digital rear view mirror, I'm gonna go ahead and write while looking at it all the time. More on this in the tips section towards the end of the video. Also, keep in mind that my peripheral vision is a lot wider than what it shows on the videos. So the mirror doesn't take 15% of my peripheral vision like it does in the videos. This is an ongoing project. I haven't figured out everything yet, even though it's fully usable already. I was going to wait until the project was completed to make this video, but since I've received several requests and questions about it, I decided to make it now with the added personal benefit of it not just being my project, it's our project now. You guys help me with the installation ideas and I help you with the general idea. We all own this project. Now, let me just show you how I have it installed so far. So this is how I temporarily have the mirror mounted. Keep in mind that we want to add some cushioning so it absorbs vibrations. Not done at all, I'm not done at all with that. It typically has two cables, power and rear camera. This is how I have it wired right now. I do have the USB charger for the bike. I just haven't installed it yet. So for now, I'm using battery power banks. Each one lasts a few hours. It'll obviously last more if you keep the mirror's brightness low. I keep it at the brightest level at all times. I just have two battery power banks in the bike and charge one of them home as needed. Again, I'm not done with the wires. I'm thinking about removing the panels and fitting them there so they're not visible. You'll have a lot of extra cable for the rear camera. Keep in mind, it's designed for the car. Find a spot to tuck it in. For me, it's under the rear seat. The power cable was pretty long too, but I used a different one I had laying around. It's just a normal USB to mini USB, not to be confused with micro USB. So you did notice how I have the rear camera installed right now. It's at the highest possible point, excluding the top case, which I wouldn't be able to mount it on. More on this in the tips section towards the end of the video. What I truly love about it, and it was a surprise really, see, when I bought it for my car, I bought it more for the dash cam capabilities than anything. I didn't see coming how handy the digital rear view mirror feature is. And to this day, if I drive a car without it, it almost feels claustrophobic, not being able to see through the rear window the same way. I'll be making a different video soon about the one in my car and another one about the one on my e-bike. I'm only going to assume that in the near future, this will be factory installed in all vehicles just like parking cameras are nowadays. I've bought five already, one for my car, one for one of my e-bikes, one for the motorcycle and two others as gifts. Ventop, reach out to me right now, throw me a freebie here. Uh, so what was I trying to accomplish? Why did I get through the trouble of finding a solution for something that for many is not even a problem? Simple, had a bad experience at a red light a while ago. I'm also a big guy. And no matter how I position my bike's side rear view mirrors, I can never see what's directly behind me. Especially at red lights. It's such a peace of mind being able to see what's going on behind me. It might give you the extra few seconds you need to move away in the event of bad news coming your way. If this ever saves one life, one time, then it was more than worth it putting thought into this. When mounting the mirror, come up with a system where it's easy to remove it because of rain and theft. 
or totally the opposite in a way what is going to be permanent, not removable. And you'll have a system to protect it from the rain, such as uh, some type of pouch or something. I'm opting for the removable system. If you have a smoke windshield, you might end up getting dark videos from your front camera. The mirror's mounting angle needs to be so you can see your chest on the reflection. You don't want to see your head or you also see sky and you won't properly see the displayed image. During nighttime, this doesn't really matter. Also, try to wear a dark jacket, you know, black, navy blue, dark green, dark red, dark anything. Black works better. A light one will reflect too much on the screen. Again, not an issue when dark. Don't mount the rear camera too low, such as by the license plate area. The higher, the better. So it acts as a real view mirror. If too low, you'll end up pointing at the grill of the vehicle behind you. Don't mount either camera pointing too high to the sky or the picture will become dark or washed out. These units normally have cheap cameras that struggle with high and vibrant brightness. Get a 10 inch one. There are 12 inch units that will just be too wide for most bike windshield and dashboards. The 12 inch version would work on most cruisers and touring bikes. Go with a decent unit. I've seen them for a bit over 50 US dollars, which I wouldn't recommend. You want clear, reliable image at all times. Don't rely on this mirror alone to make your changing lanes decisions. This is an added safety measure, and I mean it to be combined with all other existing safety measures, such as side rear view mirrors and the good old checking over your shoulders. You'll need a good quality class 10 micro SD card if you want it to work as a dash cam. If you don't use a micro SD card, it's just gonna be a digital rear view mirror and it won't record anything. If you purchase a unit that has a GPS, don't connect the GPS module to the mirror. Just my opinion. Leave that thing in the box. You don't want to record your riding while also documenting your speed. In the event of an accident, if you were going five miles per hour over the speed limit, your so-called evidence might be the actual evidence against yourself and you might end up being found as the one at fault, even though it was the other driver's fault. It has a button underneath to turn off the screen. When not in motion, feel free to turn it off and it becomes a regular mirror where you can see that beautiful face of yours. This doesn't turn off the unit itself, just the screen. You can quickly turn it back on. You might see some of these things as hassles, but the trade-off is more than worth it if you ask me, especially if it can save my life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please tell me about your ideas in the comments section. I need your help too. Ask your friends, pass this video around so we can finish this project. Let me know if any questions. Thank you.